Morgan Freeman is an American actor, producer, and narrator throughout a career spanning five decades in multiple film genres. He has received numerous accolades, including an Academy Award, a Golden Globe Award, and a Screen Actors Guild Award as well as a nomination for a Tony Award. Born June 1, 1937, age 87 years, Memphis, Tennessee, United States. Spouse, Myrna Colley Lee, M. 1980 for 2010, Janetta Dare Bradshaw, M. 1967 1979. Children, Alfonso Freeman, Morgana Freeman, Dina Freeman, Saif Leigh Freeman. Grandchildren, Donovan Lee Freeman, Joshua Caleb Freeman, Edina Hines, Alfonso Rene Freeman I.I. Parents, Morgan Porterfield Freeman, May Medna Revere. Rank, Airman First Class. With an authoritative voice and calm demeanor, this ever-popular American actor has grown into one of the most respected figures in modern U.S. cinema. Morgan was born on June 1, 1937 in Memphis, Tennessee, to May Medna, Revere, a teacher, and Morgan Porterfield Freeman, a barber. The young Freeman attended Los Angeles City College before serving several years in the U.S. Air Force as a mechanic between 1955 and 1959. His first dramatic arts exposure was on the stage including appearing in an all-African-American production of the exuberant musical Hello, Dolly. Throughout the 1970s, he continued his work on stage, winning Drama Desk and Clarence Derwent Awards, and receiving a Tony Award nomination for his performance in The Mighty Gents in 1978. In 1980, he won two Obie Awards for his portrayal of Shakespearean anti-hero Coriolanus at the New York Shakespeare Festival and for his work in Mother Courage and Her Children. Freeman won another Obie in 1984 for his performance as the messenger in the acclaimed Brooklyn Academy of Music production of Lee, Breuer's The Gospel at Colonna Sand, in 1985, won the Drama Logue Award for the same role. In 1987, Freeman created the role of Hope Colburn in Alfred Urey's Pulitzer Prize-winning play Driving Miss Daisy which brought him his fourth Obie Award. In 1990, Freeman starred as Petruchio in the New York Shakespeare Festival's The Taming of the Shrew, opposite Tracy Ullman. Returning to the Broadway stage in 2008, Freeman starred with Francis McDormand and Peter Gallagher in Clifford Adet's drama The Country Girl, directed by Mike Nichols. Freeman first appeared on TV screens as several characters, including Easy Reader, Mel Mounds, and Count Dracula, on the Children's Television Workshop. Now Sesame Workshop, show The Electric Company, 1971. He then moved into feature film with another children's adventure, who says I Can't Ride a Rainbow, 1971. Next, there was a small role in the thriller Blade, 1973, then he played Casca in Julius Caesar, 1979, and the title role in Coriolanus, 1979. Regular work was coming in for the talented Freeman and he appeared in the prison drama Zadika, 1980, and Brubaker, 1980, a witness, 1981, and portrayed the final 24 hours of slain Malcolm X in Death of a Prophet, 1981. For most of the 1980s, Freeman continued to contribute decent enough performances in films that fluctuated in their quality. However, he really stood out, scoring an Oscar nomination as a merciless hoodlum in Street Smart, 1987, and, then, he dazzled audiences and pulled a second Oscar nomination in the film version of Driving Miss Daisy, 1989, opposite Jessica Tandy. The same year, Freeman teamed up with youthful Matthew Broderick and fiery Denzel Washington in the epic Civil War drama Glory, 1989, about freed slaves being recruited to form the first all-African-American fighting brigade. His star continued to rise and the 1990s kicked off strongly with roles in The Bonfire of the Vanities, 1990, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, 1991, and The Power of One, 1992. Freeman's next role was as gunman Ned Logan, would out of retirement by friend William Mully to avenge several prostitutes, in the wild west town of Big Whiskey, in Clint Eastwood's demythologized western Unforgiven, 1992. The film was a SH and scored an acting Oscar for Gene Hackman, a directing Oscar for Eastwood, and the Oscar for Best Picture. In 1993, Freeman made his directorial debut on Bafa 1993 
and soon after formed his production company, Revelations Entertainment. More strong scripts came in, and Freeman was back behind bars depicting a knowledgeable inmate and obtaining his third Oscar nomination, befriending falsely accused banker Tim Robbins in The Shawshank Redemption, 1994. He was then back out hunting a religious serial killer in Southeast 7N, 1995, starred alongside Keeney Reeves in Chain Reaction, 1996, and was pursuing another serial murderer in Kiss the Girls, 1997. Further praise followed for his role in The Slave Tale of Amistad, 1997. He was a worried U.S. president facing Armageddon from above in Deep Impact, 1998, appeared in Neil Labute's black comedy Nurse Betty, 2000, and reprised his role as Alex Cross in Along Came a Spider, 2001. Now highly popular, he was much in demand with cinema audiences, and he co-starred in the terrorist drama, The Sum of All Fears, 2002, was a military officer, in the Stephen King-inspired Dreamcatcher, 2003, gave divine guidance as God to Jim Carrey in Bruce Almighty, 2003, and played a minor role, in the comedy The Big Bounce, 2004. 2005, was a huge year for Freeman. First, he teamed up with good friend Clint Eastwood to appear in the drama, Million Dollar Baby, 2004. Freeman's on-screen performance is simply world-class as ex-prize fighter Eddie, Scrap Iron, Dupris, who works in a rundown boxing gym alongside grizzled trainer Frankie Dunn, as the two work together to hone the skills of never-say-die female boxer Hilary Swank. Freeman received his fourth Oscar nomination and, finally, impressed the academist judges enough to win the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his performance. He also narrated Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds, 2005, and appeared in Batman Begins, 2005, as Lucius Fox, a valuable ally of Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne, Batman for director Christopher Nolan. Freeman would reprise his role in the two sequels of the record-breaking, genre-redefining trilogy. Roles in tentpoles and indies followed. Highlights include his role as a crime boss in Lucky Number Slevin, 2006, a second go-round as God in Evan Almighty, 2007, with Steve Carell taking over for Jim Carrey, and a supporting role in Ben Affleck's directorial debut, Gone Baby Gone, 2007. He co-starred with Jack Nicholson in the breakout hit The Bucket List, 2007, in 2007, and followed that up with another box office success. Wanted, 2008, then segged into the second Batman film, The Dark Knight, 2008. In 2009, he reunited with Eastwood to star in the director's true-life drama Invictus, 2009, on which Freeman also served as an executive producer. For his portrayal of Nelson Mandela in the film, Freeman garnered Oscar, Golden Globe and Critics' Choice Award nominations, and won the National Board of Review Award for Best Actor. Recently, Freeman appeared in Red, 2010, a surprise box office hit. He narrated the Conan the Barbarian, 2011, remake, starred in Rob Reiner's The Magic of Belle Isle, 2012, and capped the Batman trilogy with The Dark Knight Rises, 2012. Freeman has several films upcoming, including the thriller Now, You See Me, 2013 under the direction of Louis Lee Terrier, and the science fiction actioner Oblivion, 2013, in which he stars with Tom Cruise, family, spouses, Myrna Colley Lee, June, the 16th, 1984, September, the 15th, 2010, divorced, Janetta Dare Bradshaw, October, the 22nd, 1967, November, the 18th, 1979, divorced, Two children, children, Alfonso Freeman, Morgana Freeman, Sifle Freeman, Dina Freeman, parents, May Medna Freeman, Revere, Morgan Porterfield Freeman, relatives, sibling, 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 trademarks, frequently plays characters with calm demeanor, narration, often provides narration for his films, as either, himself or the character he is playing, often plays authoritative leaders, that seem highly trustworthy, even when they are not. Deep authorotic voice, rich yet mellow voice, earrings. Trivia, earned a private pilot license at the age of 65, listed his five favorite films as King Kong, 1933, High Noon, 1952, Milan Rouge, 1952, The Outlaw Josie Wales, 1976, and Moby Dick, 1956, keeps his Oscar statuette inside a cabinet which resides in his office. 
The cabinet was built by a good friend of his in 1998, especially for the Oscar that his friend predicted he would win. It even came with a plaque that read, No parking, reserved for Oscar, received a trademark on his name from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office on September the 19th, 2006. Worked as a mechanic in the United States Air Force. Quotes, I gravitate towards Gravitas. On his hesitation to do a long came a spider. 2001. I had a philosophic aversion to it. I didn't want to do the same thing twice. Then I realized that my philosophical aversion was bullshit. I realized I liked Alex Cross. And the fact that he's black is totally incidental. That's a rare thing for a black actor to find. On the failure of the big bounce. 2004. It was a wonderful experience. Steve Bing was the producer and was very generous. But the movie didn't turn out very well. The director, George Armitage, fell ill and we shut down production for a few weeks while he recuperated. And I think when he came back he just didn't pick up the ball and run with it, the way he should have, and the movie suffered greatly for that. I've been living with myself all of my life, so I know all of me. So when I watch me, all I see is me. It's boring on why he dislikes watching his own films. I'm not intimidated by lead roles. I'm better in them. I don't feel pressure. I feel released at times like that. That's what I'm born to do. Salaries. Angel has fallen. 2019. $7,500,000. London has fallen. 2016. $7,500,000. Olympus has fallen. 2013. $10,000,000. The Dark Knight Rises. 2012. Five million dollars. The Dark Knight, 2008, five million dollars. War of the Worlds, 2005, one million dollars. Batman Begins, 2005, five million dollars. March of the Penguins, 2005, one million dollars. <laughs>